Hi there. I'm going to talk about a model of utopia, solar punk utopia or Eden, that we're living in in Portland, Oregon, USA. Great. First slides are up. So we started a community called Kailashiko Village about 15 years ago. Uh, it was, as you can see from the photo here, a, an, a large apartment building with 32 units, 32 one-bedroom units. Uh, it was kind of in a rundown state at that time. There were a bunch of vacancies. There was a lot of drug dealing and uh, crime going on. There were shootouts in the parking lot. Uh, but we had a vision to turn this into an ecologically sustainable community and create a community where essentially there was minimal community. So this is in Portland, Oregon. Next slide, please. So what's unique about the Kailash Eco Village model? Give me a moment here. The screen I'm showing uh, doesn't show legible print. So this is a rental model. Uh, the Why this is important is because you can join our community with no capital investment. This is to contrast with uh, the typical co-housing model in the United States, uh, which, is a which is a condominium model where you require a, a lot of capital to join. So it's very inexpensive, much less than a uh, taking out a mortgage and joining a co-housing community. So this makes it easy to try out community living with no long-term commitment. Next slide. So we're on approximately 0.7 hectare site. We're fairly close into the city center. You can see the city center in the distance. That's about six kilometers away. Portland is uh, fairly unique in in American cities in that we have a great public transportation. We actually have three bus lines that are nearby. So it's it's quite possible to live in our community with no private vehicle. Uh, we have excellent bicycle access in our neighborhood and you can take a bike on any bus route or any of the public transportation uh, methods. Currently, our community is 55 residents strong. This photo shows the physical layout. This is the uh, the main building in the center. Uh, and at the bottom of the this photo, you can see uh, a street intersection painting that we did a couple of years ago as part of our community interface project. Next slide. So what is our living space like? Uh, we have 34 residential units now, 31 bedroom units and three apart, three attached apartment buildings. Our building was constructed in 1959. Uh, additionally, we have two two bedroom units and an adjacent passive house, uh, single family dwelling that was remodeled several years back into two three bedroom units. So with this mix, we primarily have singles and couples. We have a few children and a couple of families, but uh, this mix limits us to a certain extent. Next slide. So an important part of our community is having community areas. Uh, we have a community room with a kitchen, library, and media center. Uh, where we hold events, we have slideshows, we have TV nights, we have movie nights, we have presentations. Uh, we have an attached guest room. Since the units are fairly small when you have guests visiting from out of town, uh, it's great to have a, a guest room where you can put your guests up for a few days. In addition, we have a laundry and mail room area. This is uh, an event uh, when in 2013, where we were celebrating the anniversary anniversary of our founding several years earlier. Next slide. Additional community areas. Uh, we have covered bike parking. Uh, we have 
bike parking for 96 bikes, covered bike parking for 48. We have multiple outdoor and indoor gathering spaces, uh, such as at the bottom here, you can see we're developing a tree house this year. Uh, it's going to be 50 square meters. This will be a cool gathering space where we can hold potlucks and meetings. Uh, you can see in the picture above, uh, this is our bike storage area and garden tool storage area. We have a big emphasis on food production and gardening in our, in our community. Uh, and just before that, in the front, we have a community composting area. Next slide. So gardens and food production, I mentioned that's really important for our community. In fact, we meet each other in the gardens. So we have 53 fruit trees and large patches uh, of berries and grapes. We have 41 individual garden plots where individuals are allowed to basically cultivate what they like in their own space. And we have commun communally gardened areas where in an individual plot, you might have li very limited space for larger crops. So we have a group gardens program that uh, allows us to garden together. Here's an example in 2012, we had a great uh, harvest of different kind of squashes and pumpkins. Next slide. So here's a, an example of our front yard area. Um, you can see on the right side, we have a remainder of our parking lot, but right in the center here, the circular garden area uh, was actually a pavement uh, for 12 parking spaces. We had 5,000 square feet of um, spaces here, enough for 12 parking spaces. We removed this in 2000, about 2010, and turned it into a kind of a showcase circular garden. We chose this shape because it's really easy to irrigate with one uh, set of sprinklers in the center. Uh, if you know about the climate in Oregon, we have very, very dry, dry, hot, sunny summers, and it's very important to have a good irrigation system. So we have large areas dedicated to group annual gardening projects, including the circular garden. We have several food forests on site. We have six beehives to assist pollination. Next slide. We do extensive composting on site. Everyone's required to compost. And this is this picture here shows our community composting site. It's constructed out of dry stack concrete blocks. Uh, that can be easily remodeled in any shape that you like, but we keep it in this shape with 11 bins. Each bin is a couple of cubic meters, which allows us to do a significant amount of car, uh, composting. We probably compost on the order of 20 to 30 cubic meters a year. Um, we have a community wood chip depot where local arborists deposit their uh, shredded trees from tree work. Uh, and then we use that to combine with our high nitrogen inputs from kitchen compost uh, and humanure compost you'll hear about in a moment uh, to create a huge amount of compost. This has allowed us to build a huge amount of topsoil on site. We probably created about five to 10 centimeters of soil over the entire garden area. In addition, we have a lot of wildlife habitat. We have extensive rain gardens on site. Uh, we have extensive use of native plants. We have amphibian and reptile habitat and uh, butterfly gardens, bird and bat houses. Next slide. Next slide. So what are some of our green features here? Uh, as we uh, have remodeled the building over the 15 years we've been here, we've uh, spent a lot of time doing energy efficient remodeling. So as we go through unit by unit, we thicken the walls, creating more insulation. Um, and we've added a bunch of features like window quilts and other things to conserve energy in, in the building. Uh, on-site energy production, you can see we have about 60 kilowatts of 
solar power. That's enough to produce about two thirds of our power used on site now. Uh, regarding resource sharing, uh, we have extensive sharing of uh, tools, books, magazines, and other media. We have a community surround sound theater uh, and a vehicle sharing program. We have two uh, solar powered vehicles, electric vehicles that are completely powered by the solar array uh, that, are that are available for use by any of the residents. And we have extensive reuse, reduce, and recycling projects on site. Next slide. Let's talk about some of the completed and ongoing projects. Rainwater retention is very important. You can see this uh, on this slide here. The yellow lines show the rainwater piping just underneath the edge of the roof. Uh, on the south side of the building, that's diverted into a directly into a rain garden that cascades down the side of the hill. On the north side of the building, we keep the water at roof height until it enters a uh, water sculpture, which you'll see in uh, the next slide. As I mentioned, we have community vehicle sharing. We've already depaved 16 parking spaces. And the neighboring building next door, which is an integral part of the community now, was remodeled into passive house technology uh, in about 2013. Next slide. As I mentioned, we do a lot of recycling here on site. Uh, Portland has a fairly good commingled recycling program where most recyclable items are put in a single bin and they're sorted uh, at a remote location. In addition, we do recycling of styrofoam, uh, deposit containers for beverages, uh, fluorescent tubes. We do corks, packing peanuts, plastic film, and batteries. Also, we have a free area where uh, clean, reusable goods and foodstuffs are recycled in the community and actually in the neighborhood, too. Next slide. Uh, community is only as good as the number of people who participate. So we've tried to include the greater community uh, in our projects. So we have a, an interface uh, on the edge of the street where we have a bulletin board, a uh, seating area, and a street mural to increase uh, community participation. One of the uh, great projects that we've done is to have block parties where the street is closed off and painting projects like this are undertaken. Uh, in addition, our community meeting space and community gardens and community composting and wood chip depot are all open to the greater community in the neighborhood actually and in, in fact in the entire city. Next slide. Artistic endeavors. Uh, it's really important to create a beautiful uh, inspiring place to live. After all, we're trying to create a utopia or a Garden of Eden. So art projects are integral to that. So we have rainwater and kinetic sculpture. I don't, I don't know if it's possible to add, to activate this animation. I'm not sure that that's possible here. This is actually an animation. You can see this on our website if you go to our website. So we have rainwater wind and kinetic sculptures. We have multiple theme gardens with gathering areas. We have a tea house with a living roof. Living roof refers to uh, a green roof with plants growing on it. Uh, and we've undertaken stained glass, stone, wooden, and other sculptures in the garden areas and on signage. Next slide. Uh, we push the envelope. Uh, that's really important. Uh, so what does pushing the envelope mean? Well, depaving was one of the first projects we undertook. Remove pavement, remove asphalt, and turn it into gardens or other usable spaces. Ultimately, we hope to eliminate all on-site car parking except for shared and electric vehicles. Uh, I want to note that our philosophy includes the principles of non-harming, simplicity, ecological sustainability, and health. So we've 
This has led us to promote multiple vegan practices, such as a community vegan room and veganic gardening. Veganic gardening refers to organic gardening with no slaughterhouse inputs. Uh, veganic gardening allows you to close the nutrient cycle in your horticultural practices uh, by including important nutrients from human urine and composted human manures. We have actually a permitted human manure system. It's called an eco-sanitation system and gray water recycling. How about community governance? Uh, Kailashiko Village is neither a co-op nor co-housing, so the final land use decision rests with the owners, which is a group subset of the uh, residents. Uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, there's a substantial community self-governance through teams, primarily such as our group gardens team, our bikes team, our recycling reduce recycle team. Uh, we have a bunch of future projects envisioned. Uh, you can see this is an artist uh, vision of what the building will look like in the future. We've already implemented the cupola in the center. We plan to add the spires and do some other uh, aesthetic en enhancements. We also plan to increase our eco-sanitation project to include eventually 100% of excreta reuse on site. Our goal is net zero energy, in other words, to generate 100% of the power used on site. Uh, we have a large area that's currently, uh, we're contemplating remodel it, remodeling it to be using it as a workspace. And we expect to explore further community governance models. So that's the end of my presentation. Uh, I hope I've given you an idea of what uh, what it's like uh, to implement a vision of a solar pump utopia or a Garden of Eden by taking an existing apartment building with some land and creating uh, a beautiful place to live. This would be a great time for questions if anybody has any questions. Um, I just wanted to ask about how financially sustainable this is and how finances and what levels of bureaucracy are added to maintain such a community and make it sustainable in the long term? Well, uh, that's a great question. Uh, I would say when we started the community, uh, that one of the uh, roadblocks or uh, difficult, difficulties in starting a community like this is coming up with the capital to purchase a building and get it going. And there, there's been substantial uh, investment in, in infrastructure solar, such as the uh, solar panels, the PV project. So uh, it's a rental model. So that gives us a cash flow, which pays the mortgage and allows us to invest in continual improvements in the, uh, the building. Uh, it's a completely sustainable long-term project. Uh, I think I can go for the next question. Actually, uh, I've changed. Uh, it's going to be a follow-up to the previous question. When you say that it's a completely sustainable model, do you also consider the life cycle of, firstly, the solar panels, and secondly, the uh, you know the EVs you are planning to have on site? Having that said, are you also planning to do some you know interesting financially wording? good use of your energy system, things like flexibility services, or optimizing your, uh, you know, energy spending or intake? Well, <laughs> that's a, <laughs> that's a question with many, many different aspects. Um, <laughs> where do I start? Um, so, uh, we're actually, uh, able to, with our, with our current model, able to develop uh, a capital, some capital reserves to actually increase uh, potential projects. So recently we were able to acquire a project next door where we're starting a similar process of uh, t 
taking an, a, an old and dilapidated apartment building and with the goal of turning it into a sustainable a project that's energy self-sufficient, where community is very strongly em emphasized. Uh, so, so, so yes, it's it's it, it is a sustainable project, but yeah, it continually requires uh, rethinking and reimagining what could come in the future. Okay. Last one. Hey. Your setup sounds quite idyllic, and there's similar schemes, so say there's a council housing in UK, and to get on it you have to wait a long time. Do you have an equivalent waiting list of people that don't want to rent in an area and don't want to get in on your project? Uh, that, that also is a very, very great question. Yeah, we have a, a wait list of about 600 individuals, so when we have an opening in our, com in our community, we do an email blast to those who have expressed interest. Uh, so, yeah, uh, there's obviously not enough projects like this going on, which, hey, the conclusion, we need way more projects like this. So uh, we need people to uh, re-examine how they're living and reimagine how we can take existing infrastructure and change it radically in sustainable and community-oriented fashions. Thank you. All right, that's it. No more questions. Sorry.